<clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Valley Baptist Church. So glad that you could join us for our Wednesday evening service. If you please turn to 327, 327, higher ground. And once found, would you please stand? charge for the week lord lord i do thank you for today and the wonderful blessings that you gave us the safety that you that you've uh, placed upon all of us lord truly is a blessing to see your hand work throughout our days Lord, i do pray you please be with passion i give him utterance and boldness lord i do pray that you please be with us here at valley baptist church that you continue to carry us on the rest of the week lord that uh we that you keep us uh attentive to the opportunities to give the gospel lord i just pray that you all these things in your glorious name lord jesus christ amen Good evening, welcome to our Wednesday night service at Valley Baptist Church and Pastor Serrano. And we're going to be in the book of 1 Thessalonians this evening. 1 Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Finally, would you please stand for the reading of God's word? First Thessalonians chapter 4. And we begin reading a verse number 1. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4: Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, 
because if the Lord is the avenger of all such as we all have forewarned you and testified. For God had not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despised it, that despite, he therefore that despised it, despised it not man, but God, who had also given us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you study to be quiet and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. Verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Look at verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the comfort that your word gives us, for the certainty of it. We thank you, Lord God, for it. Um, the way you encourage us through your holy word, Lord God, that we don't have to be alone, that we don't have to be sad. It's, it's, it's all right to be sad, Lord God, but we have hope, and our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that we are going to see our loved ones again. Thank you for this uh, passage of scripture, Lord God, it tells us that. We love you, bless your holy word as it washes us clean, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, if there's anybody here that does not know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, that they would surrender tonight, Lord, and give their life to Christ and believe in Him for salvation. Then we pray for those that are going to be watching this video later on on YouTube, Lord God. You draw them to yourself also, Lord God, that they also may believe on Jesus and be saved. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. You're guiding and leading everything. We ask you to continue in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. In chapter 5, the Apostle Paul begins by saying, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Okay? The Lord Jesus is coming as a thief in the night. His appearance is inevitable. His appearance is eminent. It, it will happen at any moment. Like I said many, many times, there are no signs for the rapture, but there are many signs for the second coming, but nothing for the rapture. But here, here the Apostle Paul is writing a letter to the church of Thessalonica and encouraging them because someone went through the congregation telling them that they had missed the coming of the Lord. They had missed them and that they were left behind. So imagine if somebody told you, hey, the Lord already came and left. Where were you? He, he left you behind. And this is what they're feeling right here. And they're thinking that those that have died believing in Jesus Christ, their family members, that they're not going to see them again. Okay? There's, they're thinking they'll never see them again. And this makes them very, very sad. So he begins in verse number 13. And he says, but I would not have you to be ignorant. Okay? And I told you before that the words in the Bible, okay? God never put anything in the Bible that is uh, used like the world uses words. Okay? The word ignorant here, in the world we use it in a negative way. Don't we? But this is the word of God. 
The word ignorance simply means the absence of knowledge. So they didn't know. They didn't know what was happening. But I would not have you to be without knowledge, okay, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. And I told you before that whenever the Bible refers to a Christian being asleep, it is talking about the fact that the person is dead. A person is dead. Then he's, he's already died. Okay? So here he says, I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to be without uh, knowledge, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those that have already died. That you sorrow not. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Every one of us have been to a funeral service of a person who was lost. We know what happens when a person is lost and they die. We as Christians know where they go. Okay? But the lost people, they don't know that. They, they're just sad because the person passed. They don't know where he's going. They don't know what's awaiting him. They're just crying because they lost a loved one. But the way they weep and cry... They are sorrowing as if they have no hope. And that is because they have no hope. When a lost person, our lost family, goes to a funeral service, they weep very loudly. They scream. The mother and the, and the family and the sisters, all of them, they're all screaming in pain. It is very painful just to watch and listen to it. And they do that because they have no hope. That's why they do that. But Paul is telling the congregation of the Thessalonian church, don't cry like that. Because you do have hope. You have Jesus Christ. And your loved ones, you're going to see them again. So there's no need for you to cry like you had, you had the hope. Because we do have hope. Look at the last part of verse 13. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So these Christians were crying like a family cries as a, at a lost funeral service. <coughs> and Paul says, no, you shouldn't do that. You're Christians. Your faith is in Jesus Christ. You should not weep like that. You should be rejoicing because the person that passed, he's not suffering anymore. He's not in pain anymore. He's graduated. Okay. He's walking on the streets of gold, absent from the body, present with the Lord. You should be rejoicing in that. Yes, yes, I know it is sad to lose someone. And that's natural. You can feel sad and you can weep, but not as those that have no hope. Paul is saying, listen, you're going to see your loved ones again. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we believe that, don't we? All right. So if we believe that Jesus died rose again, even so them, them who? That are asleep, those that are dead, shall, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. Okay? Jesus is going to bring them with him. When? When we go up to meet him in the air. They're going to be right there low. You're going to look over to the right. There it is. Your family members right there going up to see to meet the Lord in the air. Okay? And then it gives the detailed outline. The detailed outline of what's going to take place when the Lord comes in the air. Now, I, I said before that the Lord already came in the past. He already came for us. He's in the past. Okay? He came and we celebrate his birthday and Christmas. The little baby in the manger, right? So he's already came one time, right? After he resurrected from the dead, then he completed his mission. He went back up to heaven. In Acts chapter 1, a cloud took him out of their sight. And they seated at the right hand of the Father. Okay? Now, he's going to come again to the world again, and that's called the second coming. So you have the first coming, and then you have the second coming. But this one right here is right in the middle. Okay? And this one, he's not going to touch the earth. Okay? Like he's going to do in his second coming. He's going to put his foot at the Mount of Olives and the mountain's going to split in two. Okay? No. He's going to come in the air. He's not going to touch the earth. He's simply going to come to take 
his church, his bride. He's coming for his bride, and he's going to take the bride up. Okay? So you have a loved one that, that, that has died, believing in Jesus. Will Jesus, will God bring? So them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him? So they're going to bring them up. Okay? So where are they right now? Well, they're, they're in a cemetery. Okay? Your loved one has passed away. He, he's in a cemetery. His body, anyway, is in a cemetery. But his soul is not in the cemetery. Why? Because we've already confirmed from a, a Second Corinthians chapter 5 that absent from the body, present with the Lord. Okay? So that's just his, his, uh, his body. Okay? Paul called it his tent or his tabernacle. Okay? So how is it going to happen? He begins to give us the details for this event. Okay? For this we say unto you by the coming, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive, are you beating? Is your heart beating? You're alive. We which are alive, okay, and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. Prevent means to go before. We are not going to go first. They are going to come out of the grace first. So we are not going to go up. No, no, no. Neither are they going to go up. First, they have to come out of the grave with a glorified body. Okay? Already. And then we are going to be changed and uh, twinkling of an eye. Okay? At the last trump, because the trumpet will sound. And he says in verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord should not prevent them which are asleep. Okay? In verse 15, there's something there that you're missing. There's something there that you're missing. When you read it, you go right over it and you missed it. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep we're not going to go first they're going to come up first from the grave okay they're first the ones in the grave are first all right but there's something that you're missing it's a wonderful blessing that you don't even notice is right there in verse 15. Do you see it? Do you see it? What is it? We which are alive and remain is your clue. Which are alive and remain, that's your clue. What is it? We don't have to die. We don't have to die. Amen. Okay, we're going to be like Enoch and Elijah. We're going to go up <laughs> alive. We don't have to die. It's right there in verse 15. Alive and remain. Okay? We're just going to be <coughs> changed. Okay? We're going to be changed. And we're, we're going to receive our glorified body. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them, go before them, go first, them which are asleep, those that are dead. Okay? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Okay? The Lord Jesus. He doesn't say that he's going to touch the earth. He's just descending. Remember, what heaven is the first one right here? Well, that's the first one. But what heaven is he coming from? The third one. Okay? He's coming to the first heaven. Right there in the air. Okay? And it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Okay? It, it almost looks like Jesus is shouting. Do you read it like that? Do you read that Jesus is going to shout? But think about it. Who is Jesus? He's the King of King and Lord of Lords. Supreme Creator of the universe. Does a king shout? Is it proper for a king to shout? He has servants to do that for him. He's not the one shouting. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. There's going to be a shout is what the Bible is telling us. But who's going to be the shouting? With a shout, with a voice. There it is. You see that? With a voice. Who's doing the shouting? That voice. <laughs> that voice. With the voice of the archangel. Okay? So who's going to be doing the shouting? Jesus? No, the archangel. Is that when you announce the king? Dun, 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 dun. Ladies and gentlemen, the king. Something like that, right? You see how they do it in movies, right? But we're way better than that, okay? He's going to announce the coming of the Lord with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. And we started, we studied, we have studied in the second man book of, uh, of uh, um, what are we studying right now? The book, the text. ABC is a Christian maturity. In the first manual, in the first volume, right? Because you just filled up all those, we filled up all those uh, uh, binders, right? They came fit and we had to do another five. So we call that a volume one. There, we have already studied the unseen world. And that's the study of angels, okay? We studied already the study of angels, okay? And in that study, okay, we found out that only one angel and the Bible is ever called Archangel. Okay. And who is that? Michael. Michael. So this is Michael coming with the Lord Jesus. Okay? And he's going to shout. And there's also going to be a trumpet sounding with, with the trump of God. And, and so there's going to be a trumpet that's going to sound. A trumpet. Okay? Kind of like calling. Okay? In the Old Testament, you would use trumpets to call people to war. Okay? You would use trumpets to command your troops. The military. And when they use horses, the sound of the trumpet, depending on the song, that was a command. Right? Turn right, turn left, attack, charge. They had a, a, a song for every movement. In the morning, they had a song for waking up. What's that called? Reveille. Okay, get up. All right? They had, this is a sound of a trumpet. God is calling his people. Okay? God is calling his people. All right? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay? So we who are alive and remain, nothing's happening to us yet. First, those that are in the graves are going to come out with a glorified body. Okay? And then, verse 17 is our turn. They come out first, and then verse 17, those that are alive and remain, then we are going to be changed. Look at that, 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds. What do you see there? Do you see something missing there? What's missing? Jesus. There's a couple things missing, okay? It says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Something's missing there. And then also in 17, that we which are alive and remain should be cut up together. Something missing there. Something's missing in those two verses. What's missing in those two verses? Who wrote the book of 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians? The apostle what? Paul. Paul. Okay? What's missing there in those two verses? Something is missing, but it's not really missing. It's just in a different place. Okay? Because the dead, are, the dead in Christ will rise first, right? There they are. They're rising out of the ground, right? But you don't see something that's supposed to happen. Okay? What's supposed to be happening? The rapture? Huh? The rapture? No, no, no. Not yet. The change. The change! <laughs> the change is not there. 
That's because the change is in 1 Corinthians 15. So go there with me. Keeping your finger here. You might come back. 1 Corinthians 15. There is the change. Okay? So there is a change for two groups of people. Two groups of people. First, those coming out of the grave. And then secondly, those that are alive and remain, okay? They are both going to be changed. And the Apostle Paul tells us about it here in 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 51. Verse number 51, okay? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all, and that says we shall not all what? Die. Why? Because in 1 Thessalonians it says those that are alive and remain. So not everybody's going to die. Not everybody's going to die. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be. That's what was missing in the other. The change, okay? That's because it happens so quick that it's like you, you don't see it. Okay? You're, you're not going to see it. All right? I, I don't know what a nanosecond looks like in measurement, but you, you're not going to see it. It's going to be so fast that you're just going to look at it. Everybody's already changed. It's like, and what happened? Everybody changed. But I didn't see it. I know. It got so fast. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead, the dead, those that are coming out of the grave, remember they're going to go first? The dead shall raise incor. There it is. You're not even going to see that change either. Why? Because they are already coming out of the grave with their glorified bodies incorruptible and then we which are alive and remain we shall be changed right there in verse number 52 do you see that and then he goes into more explanation for this corruptible that's our flesh remember our sinful body that we live in this house that we live in for this corruptible must put on incorruption okay and this mortal must put on immortality. So then, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Okay? Death is swallowed up in victory. Why? Why? Verse 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Life snatches the victory from the grave. Why? There's no grave. Because there is no death in, mort in immortality. There's no death in eternity. No more death. So the grave loses out. It loses the fight. It loses the battle. And... Jesus gives the victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So we go back to our text of 1 Thessalonians. Okay? So we saw the Lord coming, descending, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven... With a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive, by this time we're all changed now, okay? The Holy Spirit didn't put it here because it's already done. It's already done. Then we which are alive and remain should be caught up, and the word caught up means snatch, to snatch. When you snatch something, like that. That's what the word cut up means, okay? And, and translated from the Greek, okay? It's called raptus, raptus, from where we get the word rapture. So if anybody asks you, hey, you're not using the right word. That's not a Bible word. Yeah, you're right. But if you translate it from the Greek, it does mean raptus, which is rapture, okay? 
and then we which are alive remain to be caught up together. So which are alive, that's both of us, both groups. Those that are alive remain, and those that came out of the grave, we've all been changed now, we have a glorified bodies, and then together we should be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, in the air, okay? So he's coming from the third heaven, he's going to meet us in the air, he's gonna be right there, he's gonna call us up, and we're gonna go to him. And so shall we ever be with the Lord for all the eternity we're going to be with the Lord. Whether we come back to the earth for a thousand years or whether we go into the new Jerusalem, that's further down the road, we're always going to be with the Lord. We will never be separated from the Lord. And knowing that, it should remind us not to weep as if we had no we should be grateful and rejoice that our loved ones trust <coughs> Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. And they're now in the hands of Jesus. Remember the rich man and the poor man? When they both died, the, 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 the angels came and took Lazarus, the poor, the poor beggar, and they carried him up. Okay? They carried him up. The angels come and take up those that pass. Okay? They take him up. But the rich man, he closed his eyes for the last time here on the earth, and then he opened them again in hell. And he was tormented by the flames. Okay? This is why it's so important. The Lord is coming back very, very soon. Do not delay. To repent of your sins and trust the Lord as your personal Savior. Mm -hmm. And you who know the truth should be sharing that truth to people because it's, they're, they're running out of time. Okay? Time is running very, very fast. And so they don't want to be left behind. Okay? And I might add, don't fall for the left behind movie series. Okay? Do not fall behind, uh, fall for those, okay? And those movies, they, they, they teach that you can get saved after the rapture. That's impossible. That is impossible. Because the Lord tells us that God is going to send a strong delusion that those that reject it, their entire life, Jesus Christ, are going to believe a lie. So the person that hasn't got saved by the rapture, they're not going to be able to get saved. No one can come back and say, okay, now I believe, now I believe. No, it's not going to happen like that. That is why it's so important that you trust Jesus before the rapture. And when is that going to happen? At any moment. So time is running. Time is running. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for reminding us of these comforting words. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Thank you, Lord God, for the comforting words that we're going to see our loved ones again. Thank you, Father, that you loaned them to us for all these years. Thank you, Father, that uh, we got to love them and they loved us. But that's not the end. Thank you that you're going to bring them with you so that we can see them again in heaven. Father God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you give comfort and grace to the Boca family. Uh, to the Hayes family and all the extended Nunez family, Lord God. I pray, Heavenly Father, you put your loving arms around them and comfort them. And I pray, Father God, for those that have not trusted the Lord Jesus, Lord, that you would use this opportunity to draw them to yourself. I pray also, Father God, that the power of the Holy Spirit be on correct tomorrow as he brings the message. I pray, Heavenly Father, to give liberty to preach with boldness. Holy Spirit, God, just guide, lead, and direct everything. And we thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to meet tonight, Lord, and to hear your holy word. We thank you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand and be dismissed with thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making